Hi guys, so it's the end of the day, but I still wanted to make sure that I was filming these sort of weekly will I buy it videos. I was calling these coffee chats and usually I film in the morning, so coffee chat makes total sense. Today is going to be more of a wine chat because it is the evening time and well, a glass of wine seemed like a nice idea while filming this kind of will I buy it for the week. So last week was the first time I filmed this sort of will you buy it coffee chat now slash wine chat segment my channel. I really enjoyed it. If you like these kinds of videos where I go through and talk about all the new makeup releases, what's coming up and whether or not it really catches my eye, you will love Samantha March's community series for this. She has created a place where if you're a content creator and you are putting out videos in this kind of will I buy it space, you can upload there. So it's an easy place for a lot of us to find new video creators and new content that we may not have stumbled on otherwise so big shout out to Samantha for setting this up for everyone that series is always going to be linked down below in the description box so you can find not only my videos but all the other content creators out there as well it's funny I thought after last week I wouldn't have as much to talk about this week and I was thinking to myself well maybe this is a bi-weekly series and so I collect things for two weeks and then we talk about them so I went on to my Instagram account to kind of see uh, do I even have enough to talk about this week or should I just push it off a week and by the time I got through and created some of these close-up images and everything I realized I had a lot to talk about and there was actually some things I'm going to postpone just because I felt like this video was going to get too long so clearly the makeup industry is all about new product releases so coming up with things to talk about and share with you guys as far as what's new and what's coming is clearly not going to be a problem so that being said, we have a lot to get through. Let's get started. One thing I had flagged last week, but didn't have a lot of information, and so I kind of held off on a little bit more, is a new collection from Bobbi Brown. So this is their fall release collection. Now I still don't have an exact release date, and I don't have all the prices for these items, but I do have a little bit more information about what this collection entails, and they've released some nicer images. Um, this I found out on the Makeup Snitch. She's a great person to follow if you like these kind of what's coming out in makeup. Instagram channels. So this is their sort of camo collection. You can see the camo print on the Lux Camo Cheek Palette. They released some nail polishes, some really pretty nude lipsticks, and it looks like some potted gel liners. The thing that caught my eye about that collection were the two single shadows, specifically the one in the far right hand corner that has this really cool sort of beetle oil slick sort of look to it. It kind of looks like it's shifting from gold to cranberry to green. And if that shift is not just Photoshopped onto there, if that is the actual color, that's a cool color. And I don't feel like I have anything like it in my collection. So I am definitely going to follow this Bobbi Brown collection. And when these come out, head up to my local Nordstrom and go specifically in to swatch that shade because I am very, very interested in it. The eyeshadow palette looks nice, but I will probably skip it because the big pan highlighter in the middle is obviously really gold and I just don't do well with gold highlighters. Nail polish, I could take it or leave it. The lipsticks I may take a look at. I don't have any lipsticks from Bobbi Brown, so um, depending on the shades, that might be something fun worth trying. And then pot of gel liners, I can find those at the drugstore. I'll, and then pot of gel liners, I can find those at the drugstore all day long. So not interested in that, but man, does that single shadow look pretty. Next up is a new highlighter from Fenty Beauty. So this is her Diamond Ball Out Highlighter. It's gonna retail for $34. The cool thing is, is that 100% of the proceeds are going to two charities that have teamed up her charity, which is the Bad Girl Riri Foundation. And then there's another one called Clara Lionel Foundation. The two of them are going to, I'm guessing, split the proceeds. My challenge is, is that this is a really, it's a silver highlighter. Like it is a pure silver highlighter. So they released a pure gold one and now they've got a pure silver one. I recently tried a pure silver highlighter from Wet n Wild who released one this spring. I just didn't care for it. It looks strange on me. So even someone like myself who likes those silvery pinky undertones or those very white icy highlighters, when you go pure silver, it's just, it's too much. It looks like a Tin Man stripe or a bit of a bruise on the top of my cheek. So it's pretty. It would probably be a lovely eyeshadow. I love what they're doing from a charity perspective, but this one's probably gonna be a pass for me. 
An eyeshadow palette that I have my eye on is from Maybelline. So this is the Soda Pop palette. We don't know exactly how much it's going to retail for. Like the Lemonade Craze palette, I'm guessing it's gonna be $9.99 and it's going to launch on Amazon first. That is what happened. Once it launched to stores, the price point in many stores was higher, like $12.99, I think, or $13.99. So definitely feel like Amazon always has the best prices on Amazon. Maybelline eyeshadow palettes. So it's two day free shipping if you're a Prime member and then several dollars cheaper than anything you can find at the store. So I do like purchasing a lot of my Maybelline eyeshadow palettes from them. I did find some swatches of these where they did it on kinda sorta three different skin tones. I mean, I guess it's light, medium, and deep. It looks really pretty in the swatches. I think the colors are a little more unique. The blue raspberry shade seems really interesting to me in the pan, but then I look at the swatches and it looks like a very black based navy so i'm not sure how navy that's actually going to show up um, great pop is pretty i like that they've included a bright orange and a plum color and the sort of purpley gold running down the side there is really an interesting color as well i really am into those plums and berry colors anyway the lemonade craze palette was just okay for me i could get it to work but it wasn't like blown my socks off. So I'm kind of anticipating that I'm going to feel that way about this one. I'm going to enjoy the mattes. The shimmers are going to be a little hit and miss, but overall it's going to be just an average product for me. Something I can get to work, but nothing that's like I'm getting super excited about. I do intend to pick this one up because I want to review it for you guys. I want to swatch it myself. I want to make my own assessments about it. My anticipation is that it's going to be $9.99 out there. There is no release date yet, but I feel like it's probably coming out here within the next probably three weeks would be my guess, just based on when they have historically launched things on Amazon in the past. So got my eye on it. At that kind of price point, I will pick it up. I will give you guys a review and I'll definitely get some swatches out there on my Instagram channel once I've picked it up. So this week, Marc Jacobs released two products that I don't think anyone saw coming. So the first is their Omega Shadow. These are retailing for $29 a piece. They're considered a gel powder shadow is what they're calling them. So high impact pigments, and then they were calling them gel coated. So that's an interesting descriptor that I've not seen in any sort of makeup eyeshadow before, to be honest. Maybe that's common technology and I just don't know it. These are available now on Marc Jacobs website and then they're gonna be in Sephora on 8.4. I do think the colors are pretty. I found some swatches out there on Trend Mood. They kind of went for all of the classics. So the thing that kind of caught me off guard about these is that the pan size is huge. So these pan sizes are 3.8 grams of shadow a piece. And and in contrast, the ColourPop like press single shadows, just as a comparison, are 1.5 grams a piece. Now let's be clear, the ColourPop shadows are significantly cheaper, so it's hardly even apples to apples to compare these. This is a high-end luxury brand versus something that is very affordable and direct to consumer. So $29 for these singles, definitely not cheap but it has me intrigued. This whole gel hybrid thing, the swatches look pretty. If these do lock down and last all day, it could be something really cool. For me personally, I'm gonna wanna see these in store. I'm gonna wanna swatch them. I'm gonna want them to set down, assuming they do, and see if they really are budge proof. They're claiming that they are long wearing, like 12 hour long wear pigments. So I'm intrigued by them. I think maybe if they have a brand new type formula that I've never touched or swatched before, I'm gonna be interested in these but they're gonna have to be really unique and amazing once I touch them and swatch them for me to wanna shell out $29. So I'm not saying no, I'm saying I need a little more information. I wanna see them in person first. The other thing that they released is an extension to their eyeliner pencil. So these are their Highliner Glam Glitter Eyeliner. They're seven shades, it's a glitter finish. They're saying that it has 15 seconds of playtime for you to kind of smudge and move around before it locks down. I will say those Marc Jacobs eyeliners are some of the most long wearing I have. I will say I think that they are far superior to anything I've tried at the drugstore. They go on my eyes and they do not budge. They go on my waterline and they do not budge. Like I have not found anything that long wearing high end or drugstore but I'm also very selective about the ones that I buy from them. I really, when I look at them, think to myself, is this one I'm gonna wear in my waterline? Do I need it to last for a million years? And if so, maybe it's worth the splurge. These shades are pretty. The glitter is definitely pretty apparent when you look at the swatches there. You're definitely gonna get a lot of reflect, definitely gonna get a lot of shine. But to be honest, a glitter liner is not something I reach for 
all the time at all. In fact, in many cases, if I want a glitter liner, I'm just gonna use an eyeliner that I already have in a particular color and then add some glitter over the top. I have other liners or glitter products that I could put over top of a liner and achieve a very similar effect. So for as much as I like Marc Jacobs liners, I just can't justify a glitter version in my collection because it's not something I would use. So these are probably gonna be a pass for me. From really high end to very affordable, let's talk about a couple things that have come out from BH Cosmetics. So the first is their Brilliance Bronzer. It came out in three shades. It says it's buildable pigment. It's a satin finish, which I think is lovely. I love satin bronzer, something that gives a little bit of luminosity and is not super, super matte on my cheeks, I think is really flattering. My challenge with this is that they all seem very, very orange from the swatches that I've seen and orange from the pictures that are on VHS Cosmetics website. I just I feel like even the lightest shade there would be very, very orange on me. So even though I think the price point of $10 is reasonable and I like the thought process behind it, the shades there, I just, I, I know myself, they're not going to work for me. So those are going to be a pass for me. The other thing they released is something called their Liquid Linen Lipsticks. These retail for $7. They say they're velvety smooth, there's 10 shades, they're lightweight, comfortable, and breathable, but it also says it's a long-lasting lip color on their website, so I don't know if these are fully matte and set down, or if they are more like the Ultra Satins from ColourPop, where you're gonna have still a little bit of slip or a little bit of give to your lips. They're not fully set down, not fully transferable. If they're in that category, I might be interested in them. These five nudes are very, very pretty. And then you can see they've got some more rosy red and brown shades as their second five shades. So I think a good simple range to start with, lots of nudes, and then your kind of classic deeper colors. I feel like I just need more information about these before I would ever decide to add them to my cart. I would also probably wait for these to go on sale like everything does at BH Cosmetics eventually. So once again, I'm not saying no, I just feel like if this is another li liquid lipstick offering I'm not as interested as if it is a different more hybrid sort of satin finish formula so the other thing that they released is their Desert Oasis palette. This retailed for $22. It's matte and shimmers. They're saying it's shadows and highlighters. So I am assuming that you've got some shadows in there and then that big sort of gold bar in the right side is the highlighter. Clearly that's a highlighter that's not going to work on me. We've talked about gold highlighters not being my jam. The palette looks very simple, I guess is what I would say. The swatches look pretty. I think it's definitely more warm leaning. It seems like you might have an interesting duochrome shade there, but otherwise I just feel like it's a lot of neutrals and a lot of shades that I already have in other palettes. So this is one that looks a little bigger and a little bulkier, and it looks like it's shades I have many times over. So I don't know, this is kind of gonna be a pass for me. Next up, let's talk about a new offering from Pixie. So this is their three-in-one glow cake. These are retailing for unfortunately $28. So I first saw this image on Instagram on Pixie Beauty's uh, Instagram page and I thought, oh, how pretty is that? It's almost like they're trying to do those sort of uh, what were they? The Kevin Aquan kind of sculpting palettes there where you had multiple shades in there. I thought, okay, well maybe it's a bigger pan, it's a little more affordable. My biggest challenge with the Kevin Aquan ones I got at Christmas time that I recently decluttered is that the pan size was much smaller and so I was having a hard time getting my brush into the bronzer section versus blush versus highlighter. So a bigger pan size, I know would solve that. So I was kind of excited about these and then I went out to Target's website I found the two shades that are out there, one that's more pink and one that's more coral. They look really pretty, but $28 is really high for these. Like that's high even for Pixie in my opinion. Like Pixie makes some pretty expensive products for Target. It's definitely a mid-tier brand. It's not, you know, high-end Sephora, but it's not typically drugstore prices either. It kind of falls in the middle. With a $28 price tag on this, I kind of feel like they've left that even mid-tier and they're climbing high into the expensive makeup. So I would like to see these in store. I would definitely wait for a Target sale to get some sort of like 10% off like they do in Cartwheel sometimes. And then because I have a Target uh, debit card, you get an additional 5% off your purchase. So perhaps if I could double down on some sale items, I might consider picking this one up. It's one that I would love to tell you guys about in a review process, but gosh, I, I feel like even if I loved it, I would have a hard time recommending it to you just because that price point is really high. Like, 
I don't know, does this product interest you? Would you pay $28 for something that looked like this? I'm just, I'm not sure I would. So one thing I don't need, but I still think is absolutely gorgeous. This is a new brush set from Juvia's Place. This, this is their Royal brush set. It retails for $55. You are getting seven different brushes here. You're getting something they call a flat top perfecting brush, a foundation brush, a round buffer brush, a powder brush, a liquid foundation brush, a fan brush, and a small complexion brush. You can kind of see those there. I think this, I think these brushes are gorgeous. I think the navy handle is stunning. I love the gold. I think the gray ombre into cream is absolutely beautiful. Like these brushes, as soon as I saw them out on Instagram, I was like, oh, those are gorgeous, gorgeous brushes. They are synthetic, so they're definitely gonna be nice and soft. I would guarantee that. The biggest challenge I have here is that I don't apply foundation with a brush. So that is already going to eliminate probably a foundation brush and the liquid foundation brush from something that I'm gonna have like a true purpose for. I also don't use a flat top perfecting brush all that often. I use one with my powder foundations if I ever wear powder foundations, but I kind of feel like I have one of those. The domed powder brush looks amazing. The small complexion brush I definitely would use. I also don't use fan brushes. So I look at the set and I think it is stunning. I probably only want four of the seven brushes. So for me to spend $55, knowing that I'm only gonna really want and or use four of the brushes doesn't make sense. Now, if they ever broke this set up and sold it individually, I might consider picking one or two of them up. I think it is absolutely lovely. My other challenge is that I don't need any more brushes. Like I have all the brushes I could ever need and or use, and I have curated the collection of brushes that I think are phenomenal. Um, if you ever want a brush video, I'd be happy to do that for you guys. Um, some of my favorite brushes may or may not be available anymore, but I could definitely give you some alternatives. So if you're interested in my brush collection, the things that I really love, the collection I've kind of curated that really works well for me, let me know down in the comments. Happy to film a brush series at some point so unfortunately they think these are stunning they totally caught my eye but I am gonna pass on them next up let's talk about milk makeup so milk makeup has extended the shade range of both their flex concealer and their blur foundation so let's talk about the foundation first they've added eight new shades they now have 24 in total I will say even though 24 is not the 40 that we're seeing from a lot of different brands, I think they've been fairly inclusive. Just from looking at these pictures, I feel like there's as much emphasis on the light to medium shades as there are on the deep to dark shades. So I feel like there is a spectrum of shades here. Part of the reason I personally was struggling with trying this foundation was that the lightest shade they had really did seem too dark for me when I swatched it in store. So they have added two lighter shades to their foundation. I've got some swatches I'm gonna show you guys in a minute here of both the foundation and the concealer. The Flex Concealer also has eight new shades, so that brings the total up to 16 concealer shades. I definitely feel like that range could push a little bit further, but I also appreciate concealer is a little more forgiving as far as finding a shade that works for you. I definitely love the Flex Concealer. I tried it, I reviewed it. I will link that review up above. My biggest challenge was that it was a little too deep on me. I felt like I would love something maybe a hair lighter. So I'm kind of thinking at some point I am going to go and get a sample of the Flex Foundation in a shade that hopefully matches me. So I would like to try that at Sephora before buying a full size. And then I will probably give my existing Flex Concealer to a friend who's a little deeper and more tan than I am and pick up the correct concealer shade for me, probably one shade lighter than where I'm at right now. So here are the swatches. So I currently have the shade Fair in the Flex Concealer. I would probably pick up the shade Cream, not Porcelain. I don't tend to like a very white, bright under eye. I tend to like something that matches my skin tone. So I think the shade Cream in the concealer is gonna work for me. My gut tells me that the shade Cream in the foundation is also what is going to work for me. But I also feel like they rounded out a couple of mid-tone shades and then added three deep shades on the foundation and two deep shades on the concealer. So you look at this and I feel like you've got light, medium, and deep with equal emphasis on all of those. So I definitely think they could expand the shade range further, obviously as many shades as we can get from any brand, but I feel like at least they have been inclusive in thinking about equal emphasis on deep shades as fair to light. So. 
All right, let's talk about the Morphe Jaclyn Hill Vault Eyeshadow Collection. I had a couple of you guys ask me what my thoughts were on this in my last video because we all were hearing things out there that this was coming out in August. We found out last week that this collection is coming to Ulta and Morphe at the same time now. These are gonna launch on 8.4. My gut tells me that Morphe intended to launch this when it did a few months ago and then follow on 8.4 with Ulta. So sell as much as they could on the Morphe website and then kind of come to Ulta later on. That's what they've done in the past with other collections. My gut tells me that when the first palettes had issues and there were batch issues or just inconsistency problems and Morphe, I guess, went back to their manufacturer to get them to make it right. And honestly, kudos for them for going back and actually addressing the problem and not just selling crap palettes out into the marketplace. So I will give Morphe a lot of credit for spending the money for writing off those palettes. I have no idea how such something like that would have cost, but I do give them a lot of credit for addressing it versus just putting in consistent palettes out there. All that to say, my gut tells me that Ulta had it on their books to have it in their stores around 8-4 and or sometime in August. And Ulta has, you know they have built sales plans around how many sales they're gonna generate as a result of these palettes. So, so my guess is when the whole palette issues blew up, there were some Ulta buyers who were very concerned because they had built sales plans and forecasts around selling these palettes in Q3 in their stores. And now there was risk of not getting them in time if Murphy sold first and then gave them to Ulta later. So my guess we are seeing a sync up of dates between Ulta and Morphe for this launch on 8.4 so that Ulta can capture the sales that they had planned for the third quarter. That is just me. I used to be in retail. I am purely hypothesizing at this point, but that would be my guess as far as the planning process that happened behind the scenes. All that to say, these are retailing for $15 a piece. There are four palettes, or you can buy the entire vault for $49. I am uncertain at this point if the vault is coming in some sort of like little carrying case. If you buy all of them, do you get like a sleeve that they all slide into? That is what we saw from Jacqueline in her video. I was never quite sure if that little vault holding case was the PR kit or if that was kind of how they would come if you bought all four of them in a bundle. Regardless, when these first came out, I was going to get all four of them. I had told myself I was just gonna get one or two, and then all of a sudden I was like, well, gosh, that's $30. I might as well just spend up and get all four of them. So that was my initial thought. And then I started watching the reviews from people. I watched Samantha March's review. I watched a couple of other channels that I follow, and I watched them all struggle. And I watched channels who even loved the original Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, have put it in their top five palettes, struggle and I thought to myself, okay, well, I'm no longer interested. Obviously the whole story broke and we all followed it and we realized that there was an issue. And in between that time, I've really had time to think about what are palettes that I would enjoy? Do I need all four of them? Am I actually going to wear all of these? So let's talk about each one, one by one. And I'm gonna kind of share where I'm, my thinking is at this point, because I think it's shifted from that original, I'm just gonna buy all of them. So the first one is Ring the Alarm. This is a very warm toned palette. You've got some golds, you've got a really pretty pink in there, but then you've got a lot of deeper, darker, warmer colors. I look at this one and of the four that came out, even early on, this is the one that called to me the least because I feel like I have these colors a zillion times over and a lot of different palettes and a lot of quality formulas. So I thought to myself, well, I'm sure this one will be nice, but it's the one that I'm least interested in. That continues to be my thought process today. So this one's gonna be a pass for me. The Bling Boss, the Bling Boss palette, I think, looks really cool. So I feel like it's a little more cool toned leaning. You've got the purples, you've got a taupe in there that I really love, a matte taupe. The lightest shades look really beautiful. You've got a stunning lavender gold shift in there and a plum and you've got a very pretty antique gold. That reddish shade looked really interesting. Out of all four of them, this was the one that caught my eye the most. And this is the one that I still have my eye on probably at the top of my list. The Dark Magic palette was the other one that caught my eye and I thought, wow, that's a really cool mix of colors. I mean, you've got a really interesting silver, got a nice brown transition shade, olives and dark teals and navies. Those are really cool colors. Like what an interesting dark smoky palette. My thinking on this has shifted a little bit. So I realized that I own a lot of these dark matte 
shades. Shades that I've picked up from ColourPop, shades that I've picked up from Sydney Grace. I have a lot of these dark matte colors in these cooler tones, like these navies and teals, and I don't use them that often. Now, it probably means I need to step out of my comfort zone a little bit, but it also means that I have these colors to make these looks. I could easily put together a look with all of these colors in my singles collection as it exists today. And I don't reach for those shades a ton. So I was really attracted to the Dark Magic palette. And then the more I thought about it, the more I realized like if I wanna make a dark smoky eye that's green based or teal based or navy based, I can do that. And I don't feel like a standalone palette that focuses on just those dark shades is going to be something that I reach for a lot. This is one that I would probably swatch. I would do some looks for you guys and then would probably sit in my drawer. So at the end of the day, I've decided this one is going to be a pass for me as well. Armed and Gorgeous is the final palette. This was kind of third on my list of things I was interested in when I when it first came out. I thought the mustard shade looked really pretty and I thought that the olive, once again, looked really cool and interesting. But then I started breaking it down and I realized I have some really nice mustard shades now in my collection, not something that I feel like I desperately need. The rest of the matte shades are oranges and rusts and darker warm browns. I have those all over the place as well in zillions of palettes and in singles. The deep bronze shade also is in my collection many times over. I have a white that I like in palettes and in singles. So although I think I could take this palette as inspiration, I also feel like I own these shades many, many, many times over. So I guess what I'm telling you is that at the end of the day, I do intend to pick up one of these palettes. I'm gonna pass on the other three. I'm not gonna buy the vault. I do intend to pick up the Bling Boss palette. I think the color combo is really cool. I think that there are some interesting shades in here that may be in my collection, but might not be. And so I'm definitely interested in getting one of these and swatching it. I will also say this seems to be the palette that everyone had the most issue with from the first launch. So I'm also curious to get my hands on this one and see what the quality is like. This is one that's going to be the most telling in my opinion over whether or not she improved the formula and they have it kind of nailed at this point. So I'm gonna spend the $15, I'm gonna pick up Bling Boss and I'm gonna pass on the other three palettes. But I am curious what you guys are thinking at this point after the mishap, after the new formulation and new palette creation are you gonna pick up the full collection? Are you leaning towards one palette or another? What are your thoughts or is this a total pass for you? Let me know down in the comments below. Definitely love to hear what you're thinking. Okay, so we spent a lot of time talking about the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Vault collection. I knew we would. Well, I have one more collection I wanted to talk about uh, before we wrap this video up, and that is a new collection from Becca. So Becca is launching a Skin Love collection. It consists of a an elixir and a foundation and a glaze stick. These will be available on 8.3 on Becca's website, Sephora, and really any retailer that carries Becca. I think Nordstrom is also included in that list now. So this is an interesting collection. So let's break down these products. The first up is a foundation. So this is coming in 24 shades. They are describing this as a weightless medium buildable foundation with a soft matte finish that mimics the look of smooth, healthy skin. Self-setting foundation provides medium, buildable coverage, looks and feels, weightless and natural, blurs imperfections and pores. The soft matte gives me a little bit of pause, but it could also be more of a description for a natural finish foundation. Sometimes when they say soft matte, really what they mean is natural finish. The, so, self, the self setting comment gives me a little bit of pause to make me think that it might be more matte, but I do have some more natural finish foundations that set down for me that I don't need a powder. So in theory, if this isn't overly matte and it is self-setting, it might be something that actually fits what I love in a natural finish foundation. If I am not wearing a more luminous foundation, I tend to like those sort of soft focus, natural satiny kind of foundations. The shade range for 24 seems okay. I mean, you definitely have at least six deeper shades, maybe seven if you count the shade maple. You've got some mid-tones and then you head very, it seems like into light. So if I'm gonna point to any category that might be under 
represented. It might be sort of those light medium shades. So similar to the Milk Makeup one, at least I feel like they have a nice range of shades. They are focused on light, medium, and deep, and you see that kind of worked throughout. I will be curious to see what this looks like as more swatches come out. These are swatches from the brand, so I'll be curious to see what these look like live swatched as PR kits go out. We start seeing swatches from other Instagrammers and beauty bloggers of all of the shades. So this is one I feel like I would like to see and feel in the store and probably I will get a sample of. It's not one that I'm gonna stampede out and just go purchase. I kind of feel like I'm gonna be that with most foundations though. I don't like this idea of buying an entire bottle and trying it and not liking it and then having to make a decision on, do I just throw away this money and donate it or do I take it back to Sephora knowing that they're going to give me my money back but then they're going to have to just chuck, chuck the product. So at least this one is one that is going to be at Sephora and I will probably at some point go in and pick up a little sample and give this a try just to understand what the foundation is like. So I'm interested, but I'm not intending to go out and purchase this on day one. The other thing they've released is the Skin Love Glow Elixir. This is $48. Now, there is no denying that this is an absolutely beautiful bottle. They are describing this as a brightening hydra complex with a proprietary blend of natural ingredients to help brighten, hydrate, and soothe skin. Radiance boosting formula is enriched with brightening molasses. It's the first time I've heard molasses is brightening, but oh wait. A soothing blend of honey, algae, and peony extract, moisture magnets like sodium hyaluronate, and licorice. I never heard licorice was a moisture magnet. It also is an antioxidant smoothie, of blueberry extract, cranberry extract, resveratrol, and vitamin E. It is meant as a primer. I am curious to see what this feels like on the skin. I mean, in theory, having a primer that has additional skincare benefits to it, I like that idea. You guys probably know at this point, one of my favorite ones is from It Cosmetics, and it's loaded to the gills with skincare ingredients, so I feel really good about putting it on my skin as a primer. I'm curious about this one. Um, I need to smell it first because smell is a big deal for me and I don't wanna put something heavily fragranced on for a primer. And I would like to see what this actually feels like and does it feel super hydrating? How does this one feel versus the Smashbox serum primer that's out there? So I'm not saying no to this one. I'm saying I need more information and I would definitely like to see it and feel it in store first. Uh, the last thing they released as part of this collection is their Skin Love Glow Glaze Stick. That is hard to say. This is retailing for $28. I think it's just coming in one shade. I've only been able to find one shade out there. This seems like a cream stick highlighter. I could give two rats asses about this one. There are cream stick highlighters galore out there. If you want to do a cream highlighter, then at least give us a range of shades. Give us you know, three, four, five, six different colors to match a very, various different skin tones. I mean, I just, I'm. this is a very lackluster offering for me if it's just the one shade. So, you know, maybe it's a universal shade. Maybe it's gonna look amazing on everyone. Maybe I will be wrong and this will be the most wet, glossy, beautiful highlight of life. Right now, from what I know about it, I'm kind of not interested whatsoever. So this right now is going to be a giant pass for me. All right guys, so that wraps us up for this week's Will I Buy It? There's definitely a ton of entries coming out. There are more that I have flagged that I didn't talk about, but I wanna make sure that I'm also waiting until I have information on some of these products. So just because I have one blurry screenshot of something that's coming out for holiday this year, doesn't mean I'm probably gonna talk about it. I'm probably gonna wait until we have more information and more details, but I definitely am enjoying filming these videos. Love to hear what you guys were interested in last week and what things you were passing on and why. So once again, share those down in the comments below. And then if you guys don't follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I am at Sarah Beauty Hub on all my social platforms. Definitely if you see things out there that you would like me to talk about in these videos, tag me and I would be happy to add them to my list and chat about them with you guys. But until next week, that is all for now. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.